People think of us as a world music festival, but I think that's a, it's a very passe term. In the very early days of Worm Adelaide, the types of music being played were considered a lot more exotic. We, we tried to bring quite diverse artists out, so quite often you were bringing them from parts of the world that were really difficult to get to, and in many cases they were artists that perhaps hadn't even been on planes before. It was going to be a one-off event at the Adelaide Festival. Uh, at the first event, there was really a sense that something special had been created. It potentially had a life beyond just a one-off event for the festival. It started out as a very um, a large-scale, hippie-ish kind of an event that was very, very gentle. I guess the most amazing thing is the range of uh, audience members. They range from 60-year-olds and up and right down to the little kids. And that's been one of the things that's always been true about Wyoming Adelaide. Originally, we planned and announced that the festival would be held at um, Belair National Park in Long Gully. If there was a day of total fire ban, the park would be closed and we wouldn't be able to use it at all. So in a you know, bit of a mad rush, we looked around to find somewhere. Mounting an event in the gardens has its, uh, its own challenges with uh, working with the Botanic Park. Uh, and it's obviously not a uh, big open area of land out in the middle of nowhere. There's a lot of considerations from neighbours through to the park itself, the fact it's a public space that has to be closed down for two weeks as a, as a build and event site, uh, all the services that have to be bought in and then taken out according to a certain schedule. Uh, basically everything does have to be temporary, we can't build any infrastructure, I leave no trace sort of uh, method behind it all. So, When they walk into the Botanic Park, if they've been to any other music festival, I think people realise very quickly that it's something very special. We start with our international programming. Uh, we mainly focus on the artists that are coming over and we focus on their different stories and their backgrounds and their musical genres. We're really looking at great music, no matter where it's from. <laughs> Most of the artists that play at the festival don't really get radio airplay. We have dance acts that come from all across the world. It can really open up people's eyes. As much as it's a festival, it's also a retail beast. We um, certainly protect the integrity of the event. Each stall selection, we look at it in its own merits. Um, how it fits in with the, uh, the ethos of the event, choosing the right stalls that are a great fit. Every year we look at improving uh, the event from the previous year. The evolution of the festival itself comes from our own debriefs after every event. We had the idea of trying to expand the, the sense of cultural exchange by focusing on food and the food from the countries that the artists came from. And music is about that exchange between worlds and, and different ways of looking at the world. I, you know, volunteers have been involved since day dot, so 20 years ago. Um, like any festival, obviously there's so many roles that I think there is a level of altruism involved. People like to give back to the community or give back to the festival that they've been attending for some of them since it started. It's a long time. I mean, it's it, the, the way that it's developed over the last 20 years. You know, it is quite a different beast to what it was in 1992. Uh, what will festivals be like in five years? Even I don't know. I think it's going to be um, an absolutely magnificent event. It's going to um, continue to evolve and grow just the way it has in the past 20 years. I have no, no idea what it'll look like in 20 years. I certainly didn't have any idea it would look like this in 20 years. It went longer. It would. Uh change its flavour so I think it's uh, what you see is uh, probably going to be uh, much of what you get in the future. Uh, hopefully not too far off what it looks like today. I mean it may be a little larger, there may be a few differences here or there but I think uh, everyone loves Warm Adelaide for what it is, the, the atmosphere and the vibe that is created and, and anything that changed that too much would just uh, be another event. Silence, the shadows grow.